The Super Robot Wars community, at least in English, generally refers to the attacks units make as, well, attacks. In-game, however, individual attacks are almost always referred to as weapons. Weapon attack, weapon terrain adaptivity, and in the tutorial section, weapon properties. Whatever you want to call them, each one has certain properties assigned to it, giving them added effects in addition to its damage. In this video, I'll be going over each property, some examples, and some other interesting information. I'll be using Super Robot Wars 30 as the basis for this one, but they will apply to V, X, T, and perhaps earlier games. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy. So the first one, which is the most common and arguably important, is Move and Fire. I always refer to them as post-movement attacks. This property is pretty simple. The attack can be used after moving your unit. It's mostly seen on melee or short-ranged attacks. Almost all units have some weapons that have this property, many even being their strongest attack. The Spirit Command Charge gives all of your unit's attacks, excluding map weapons, move and fire. Now onto the Special Weapon property. These have effects that can alter how the attack functions, or apply a status effect to the enemy unit. The breakdowns are as follows. Barrier Buster. Ignores an enemy's barrier if it has one. Ignore size. Ignores any and all damage reduction incurred when attacking a larger mech. Armor down. Reduces enemy armor by 200 for one turn. Morale down. Reduces morale of an enemy pilot by 5. Mobility down. Reduces enemy unit's mobility by 30 for one turn. Accuracy down. Reduces enemy unit's sight by 30 for one turn. The status effects will not be applied if the enemy unit reduced the damage of the attack to zero with any kind of barrier or defense. The Ignore Size effect will function as if the unit has maximum stacks of the Ignore Size skill. The wording for Armor Down does not include the For One Turn like Mobility and Accuracy Down, but I tested it with Mazinger Z and it only lasted for one turn. Also, it seems as though units can only have three Special Weapon Properties max. I could not find any that have more. Next up is Counter Weapon, the rarest of the bunch. It states, if used to counter, the weapon strikes first. It's basically the full counter skill, but for a specific attack and it's usually a weaker one. This property is useless once a pilot does have the full counter skill. This property, as I've said, is extremely rare. Like, out of the 100 or so units in the game, only 9 attacks in total have this property. And finally, we got Beam Weapon. Ranged beam attacks with this property will have their damage reduced by the following barriers. Eye Field, reduced damage by 1500. Beam Coat, reduced damage by 1000. Zimmerit Coating, reduced damage by 1000. EM Shield, nullified attack if less than 2,000 damage is dealt. Nano Laminate Armor, reduces damage by 3,000. Interestingly, melee attacks with the Beam Weapon property don't get blocked. Only ranged weapons with the Beam Weapon property will be blocked. Now it's time for some stats. Only three attacks in the game have all three weapon properties, and they are the RX-78-2 Gundam's Beam Saber, the V-2 Assault Buster Gundam's Wings of Light, and the High New Gundam's Fin Funnels. The nine weapons stated earlier that have the counter weapon property are the RX-78-2's Beam Saber and Beam Rifle, the Dreistrager's Missile Canisters, the New Gundam's Fin Funnels, the Mass-Produced New Gundam's Fin Funnels, the High New Gundam's Fin Funnels, Seven Suits Knife, Getter 2 Devolution's Drill Punch, and the Daigengar Zankanto Denko Seka. Despite the surface level nature, I didn't think I would find anything too interesting about weapon properties for this video, but here we are. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be covering a lot more in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.